So what'd you work on? What's the synopsis? So um, a lot of the things that people are asking about for our customers are UI updates or making like they say it. Some people have been straight up and be like, it looks shitty. Others have been like, it looks like an engineer designed it. And my response to that has always been, that's been very intentional from the beginning because we need to focus on the functionality of the platform, not necessarily how it looks. Well, we've gotten to a point where the functionality is pretty rock solid. And now we need to update the UI to make it look at, make it look prettier, make it feel and, and, um, react in a different way. And there's also been more features that we've added over time that has se like semi fragmented certain elements. So for example, to embed a chatbot on your website. Right now, there is a section called embed your chatbot, but it might make more sense to put the embed chatbot section inside the integrations tab where all the other integrations are. And so it's like these little things that I've been trying to figure out how to prioritize and design and create a UI so that way I can give it to the engineering team and they can just knock it out without having to think of what it's going to look like or the repercussions of how this might affect other things in the platform. So last night I completely redesigned our marketplace, which is going to allow agencies to create AI agents and put them into a marketplace that they can then sell to other, to their customers. Wow. And as an agency, you can make them free or you can make them paid and you can control if you want people to be able to edit the prompt or just be able to use it. So there's like all these different things from uh, a functionality point of view that I have to think about and then design a UI and UX that makes that make sense. So designed the agency view for the marketplace last night, how you create and add and update an AI agent to the marketplace. I also designed the sub accounts view. So like the customer view, how the customer sees that and how they clone and purchase and download uh, AI agents. I did all three levels of analytics, the individual AI agent analytics, the sub account analytics, which shows the anal analytics across all your AI agents in that sub account. And then the agency analytics, which shows all action across all sub accounts and all AI agents in all sub accounts and a few other like minor things. But like, I was just on a freaking roll and you know, I was, I sat down at probably like two, 3 PM and I look up and it's like nine 30 and like, Oh, what a day. That's awesome, man. Let's see. This is, uh, the. I think there's a misconception about building, especially when you're getting these comments about, you know, the front end design looks like shit. You're like, well, yeah, because we focused on the back end because we're one of the only platforms that are properly built from the ground up that's not using third party integrations for everything. So exactly. the design part is probably it, you did it in the right order. The back end functionality needs to be perfect before you fix the front end design. And you're also building this for businesses, right? It's not like this is a mobile app where people are going to look at the design and go, oh, no, I don't like that. This is a B2B product. And now just stitching together the front end is probably going to be easier because the back end functionality is so solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact that we have more and higher successful agencies using the platform and now their customers are giving feedback about how it looks shitty. So it's like before the, nobody... Nobody was succeeding on the platform, you know, when we, when we first launched, cause we had just launched, but now that there are, and people are giving that feedback cause that's what their end customers are using. It's now trickling up the stream back to us through the agencies. And to me, that's a good sign because it, it tells me that there's, there's more end user usage than, than ever before. Like. You know, I'll, 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 it's like a, re, it's a really good sign. I think. Yeah. Getting end user feedback is the ultimate goal because you know that it's trickling through to people that are actually using the platform and then it's going to come back to you, but it's yeah. just for you, it's just a system of priority, right? Like there's only so many dev hours. There's only so many things that you can work on during the day. And the functionality is going to be more important than the design. 
it would be a worse thing if the feedback that you got was, this isn't working. This core feature is not working. And that would be the worst situation. Yeah. The other the other thing is when we launched Claude Artifacts and that whole system was not out or available. So for everybody that's listening, Claude Artifacts allows me to basically take a screenshot of my existing application and then I tell Claude AI a prompt, redesign this so it looks better, basically. And then it will write the code to create that interface, but then it will also be able to render that code in the browser right next to your prompt. So as a user, and I can show an example here of one of the ones I was working on last night. As a user, you can make very quick changes or updates based off of a simple text prompt. And it's sensational. <laughs> and this wasn't available when you were designing it the first time. Exactly. We had to do all this stuff with, um, you know, tools like Figma and Miro and, and things like that. Um, so I believe this one started where I was just like, here's a screenshot of some, some element. And I was like, rebuild this with some change with some all changes. And over the next like 30 minutes of prompting, it then comes to me with, oh, maybe this is the wrong one. So then it comes to me with something like this, where it's actually functional. Like I can click on the buttons, things are working. And then I could even publish it. And then I can share this URL and link with my dev team, which gives them a live working mock-up of the interface that I've designed. That's so cool. That's so cool. See, that that on its own, I think a lot of communicating with devs is just giving step-by-step -step instructions on what you want the, mm -hmm. how you want the design and functionality to communicate with each other. This exactly. solves that problem. And it gives you the base code. So, and it know, gives you the base win. code. Yeah. And it's, it's, in my opinion, easier for me, it's easier for me to write a prompt to make a change than it is to do the change in a graphical user interface. Right. Right. That makes sense. So when I was doing all these things last night, I was just like, oh, let me make one for this. Let me make one for this. And so I just have all of these live mockups, which have all of this functionality that I can just be like, okay, you know, dev team, here's exactly my thoughts. Here, like this is what is in my head is now on paper. Mm -hmm. And whether or not they can take the exact code and, and copy it over doesn't necessarily matter I mean, it would be great if they could do that, but since we're using slightly different libraries, they would have to rebuild or remake some of these elements. Um, but that's okay because it still shows the full flow of, of basically everything. Do you think there will come a point where the platform is so stable and the version updates don't have huge core functionality changes to the point where you can just hire somebody for this role to just redesign the platform and build out stuff that you just UX UI. Yeah. So we, I mean, we were going to do that. We were talking about how we needed to add a designer to the dev team, to the engineering team. We're not going to hire that person anymore because of this flow. E I'm able it. to like me and uh, Drew, our head of customer success, who has the most touch points with the most customers. We're, we're basically working together to redesign these elements based on customer feedback and how people are using the platform. So who better to design the updates than, than that team, you know, not someone new that has no idea what we're going for or our track record. Um, right. That's what we were talking about last week is that if customer can success can actually design a new interface 
and show it to your customers and get live feedback. Think about how quick that feedback loop is. And then when you're designing it, you have to code for it anyways. So when you approve it and send it to the dev team, you can implement changes way faster. Exactly. I gave Drew a quick tutorial on how I was doing this with Claude. And within 12 hours, he was sending me back links of live mockups of being like, here's my idea for analytics. Here's my idea for this. I'm like, yes, this is what I needed. And I love it because it's so similar to what I was already thinking. So everybody's still so much so in line with uh, how it should be built or used. Like it's it's obvious of how it should be built or used. And I love that that's that's the approach that we're taking to build some of these newer elements. Is it's so logical and obvious that that button should be there and it does do the thing that I expect it to do. And that's probably the importance of having somebody that you work so closely with that's been there from the beginning. Like the, yeah. the person that's going to do the design has to understand the product so unbelievably well and the functionality behind it. Right. Yeah, it's not something that you can outsource. I also know that I would be so nitpicky that it would take us more time and money for me to provide revisions back and forth to a designer, especially one that would potentially be on another time zone. Right. Um, I was like, it's going to be so much more time and money to just have another person give their say over something when I was like, I can do this work and I want to do it. And it's fun. Like I spent <laughs> like six hours last night just kind of designing stuff that I didn't necessarily need to do right now, but I can't wait to get on the, the stand-up call today and be like, guys, look what I did last night and show it off to the team and be like, yeah, like, let's go.